assalamu alaikum uh, dear viewers uh, welcome to my new class uh, <clears throat> today's new chapter about uh, anti malarial drugs so first of all i am going to define anti malarial drugs anti malarial drugs are those drugs are those agents which are used against malarial parasites these are the objectives which we will have to cover <clears throat> after at the completion of this unit the students will be able to define the most commonly used anti malarial drugs that is used to prevent and treat infections malaria in this chapter we will briefly discuss the action and effects of selected anti malarial malarial drugs list some of the most commonly used drugs for each drug categories and then after that we will also highlight the nursing myers and patient education which can be taken if the patient is using to treat and prevent infections okay let's take a start what is malaria so malaria uh, means bad air malaria it is caused by a parasites which is called plasmodium parasites there are different disease it may be bacterial virals fungal and many more so there are different type of disease which are caused by different type of parasites so actually malaria this is viral disease plasmodium genus of unicellular eukaryotes that are the parasites of vertebrates and insects a life threatening parasites disease almost 40% of the world population has at risk 90% of the deaths due to malaria occurrence in sub saharan africa mostly among the young children so there are almost 90% of the deaths uh, due to malaria occur in the sub saharan Af africa mostly among the young children so around from 400 to 900 million people they are affected uh, malaria uh, remain uh, the world most devastating human parasitic infection Uh, according to world health organizations in 1997 the death ratio in the human population were all the world so all over the world that is 1.7 million to 2.5 millions uh, there are five uh, different type of species of malaria so you can see the percentage so plasmodium falciparum so which is the dangerous form of parasites that is 75% the second one is plasmodium malaria the third one is plasmodium ovale and then plasmodium vivax that is 12 12 12% 20% and then many and more plasmodiums no lesi so as we know that uh, malaria the dangerous uh, species of malaria that is plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium vivax So there are about five parasite species that cause malaria in humans, and two of these species in Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax and pose the greatest threats: quinine, chloroquine, quinidine, mefloquines, and etoquines, and the artemisinin compounds. Uh, progonil pyrimethamine sulfadoxine sulfonamide sulfones slow acting drugs etc these are the drug used to treat the malaria so all these agents they are used to treat malaria then it depend upon on the condition that which parasites they are responsible for that particular disease uh, how this uh, malarial parasites how 
this malaria can be transmitted uh, from one person. Uh, how? What are the uh, routes through which uh, these malaria parasites can transmit these diseases? So malaria uh, parasites are malarial parasites. So they are transmitted from person from one person to another by biting up a female enopelis mosquito. So the female enopelis mosquito is the main causative agents. The male one is called Culex. So malaria uh, do not transmit by male mosquito uh, due to the male mosquito feed on the plant juice and not the blood. But according to uh, different type of literatures and according to uh, different type of surveys, so uh, it is confirmed that uh, nowadays Culex is also responsible to cause malaria. But uh, here it has been highlighted that the uh, malaria they are actually caused by the female Enopelis mosquito and there are 60 species of the Enopelis mosquito which are able to transmit the malaria. So Enopelis mosquito breed and waters. Uh, come to only uh, signs, symptoms of the malaria. So the pathology and clinical manifestation associated with malaria are almost exclusively due to asexual erythrocytic stage of parasites. These are the signs and symptoms uh, which are reported whenever a patient or a person is spied by this Enopelis mosquito. So, first of all, the first one is fever. So, mostly the first day it is very high after May continues or irregulars. It means that it is high, there will be high temperature. Uh, there will be headache, especially at the back side, nausea, vomiting, and shaking chills. Uh, another sign symptom that is jaundice uh, and with the yellowish uh, of skin or whitening of eye due to destruction of erythrocytes or maybe the disease of liver. Uh, another one is dehydration. So whenever there is high fever, poor intake and vomiting, so initial manifestation of malaria are non-specific and resemble to flu-like symptoms. Actually, these pathogens or these malarial parasites, so it can uh, directly uh, attack on your RBC, red blood cells. So, there may be chances of uh, low blood volume, hypovolemic conditions. Okay, let's see here. This is the list you can see uh, the different type of drugs which are used in the management or treatment of malaria. So the first one is four amino quinolones. So the drug is chloroquine, which can be represented by symbol CQ, amodequines and peperoquines, while the second one is quinolones methanol, that is uh, mefloquine. These are the classes, four amino quinolines. So, this class include these drugs like chloroquine, emodequines, and peperoquines. The second one is uh, quinolone uh, men, uh, methanols. So, the drugs which include in this class, that is mefloquine. The third one is sincone alkalite. So, this class include quinine and quinidine. So, while the four, fourth one is biquinide. So, biquinide it include the proguanyl or chloroquinides. The fifth one is diminopyramidine, so it includes the so another drug is pyramethamines. These are the drugs which include in this class. The sixth one is eight amino quinolones. So, well, so these are the drugs which belong to the eight amino quinolone, that is primaquine and uh, tifinoquines. Uh, the seventh one is sulfonamides and sulfone, which include sulfadoxine and sulfamethoxazole. Uh, as well as the uh, sulfamethaphyrazones and dipsone, etc. Uh, the eighth one is uh, the eighth one, this is antibiotics. So, the antibiotics which are in colloids in this group that is tetracycline, doxycycline, clandamycin. The ninth one is uh, <coughs> sesquiterpenes, lectones, that is uh, artisonates, artimeters, and arthritis, and arterial lens. 
The tenth one, this is another class which is called amino alcohols, uh, which include uh, the different type of drugs uh, which are used against uh, malaria, malarial parasites. So it is called halopentrines and lomipentrines. Uh, another one is uh, nephthyridine, so it includes pyroneridines and the twelfth, the, another one is nephthoquinolones. It is called nephthoquinolones. Okay, so after that, uh, drugs uh, used in malaria, uh, which may cause tissue uh, schizontocytes, these are the drugs which can eliminate developing or dormant the liver forms. One is blood schizontocytes, that is called the drugs which are acting on the erythrocytes, parasites. Another one is uh, gametocytes. Gametocytes are those drugs that kill the sexual stages and prevent the transmission to the muscatium. Uh, commonly drug used in malaria, you can see here in the last uh, include chloroquines and etovacones, uh, progonels, uh, artemether, lomifentrines and mefloquine, quinines, quinidines, uh, doxycycline with quinines, clandamycin with quinines and altisunate. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, come toward the anti-malarial drug that is called quinine. So quinine is a medication used to treat malaria and babiosis. This include the treatment of malaria due to plasmodium falciferum that is resistance to the chloroquine when artismates is not available. While use of restless uh, leg syndrome, so it is not recommended for, the pur for this purpose due to risk of side effects. It can be taken by mouth or used intravenously. So I am talking about the quinines. Malaria resistance to quinine occurs in certain areas of the world. Quinine is also the ingredient in uh, tonics water that gives it its bitter taste. Uh, come toward the history of quinine. So quinine was for the first time isolated in 1820 from the bark of the Sincona tree that is called Sincona bark. The bark extracts have been used to treat malaria since at least 1632. So it is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, the most effective and safe medicine needed in health care system. Uh, this is the report. provided by the World Health Organizations. The simple mechanism of action or mood of actions of quinine is the rise to be toxic to the malarial pathogens like they are used against plasmodium palsiparum so it can interfere with the parasite's ability to dissolve and metabolize the hemoglobin. Because these pathogens or these microorganisms can directly attack on the red blood cell on erythrocytes. After destruction of erythrocytes, in order to avoid these conditions, these quinines can interfere with the parasites' ability to dissolve metabolize the hemoglobin. As with other quinolones anti-malarial drugs, as we are using the combination therapies, so the mechanism of action of quinine has not been fully resolved, but it can directly interfere with the parasites' ability to dissolve and metabolize the hemoglobin. The mm, another mechanism that this model involved the inhibition of hemozymes biocrystallizations and the hemidetoxification pathway, which facilitate the aggregation of cytotoxic heme. They will be free cytotoxic heme uh, that can be accumulate uh, in the parasites which causing their deaths. So whenever uh, there is uh, no availability of parasites or BC heme, so quinine may target the malaria furine nucleosides phosphorylase enzymes which is the basic and compensatory mechanisms.
through which it can destroy, it can devastate the microorganisms. Come toward the clinical indication. So quinine is the first line treatment for malaria and it should be used only when artemisinins are not available. So quinine is also used to treat lupus, erythromatosis and arthritis. In the past, quinine was frequently prescribed as, a, as an off-label treatment for leg cramps at night. But this has become less due to food and drug interactions. Administrations warning that this practice is associated with life-threatening side effects. Uh, the side effects which are reported after the administration of quinine, so common side effects include headache, uh, ringing in the ears, uh, trouble seeing and sweating, and more severe side effects include deafness, uh, there may be chance of low blood uh, platelet count, so the platelet count becomes low, and irregular heartbeat. Especially uh, whenever uh, there is a plastic anemia, hemolytic anemia, when your blood volume becomes low, so there will be definitely a regular heartbeat. So uh, the same condition has uh, happened here. So uh, use can make uh, one more prone to sunburn. And while it is unclear if used during pregnancy, so it can cause harm to the baby uh, used to treat malaria during pregnancy, uh, that is still recommended. And quinine is an alkali, naturally occurring chemical compound. How it works as a management is not entirely clear. Uh, the contraindications, now come toward the contraindications and which quinine cannot be used. So you know that quinine is anti-malarial drugs. But quinine can cause hemolysis, rupturing uh, of red blood cells. Actually, quinine can cause hemolysis and G6PD deficiency, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase reductase deficiency, which is the inherited deficiency. But this risk is small, and the physician shouldn't hesitate to use the quinine and the people with G6PD deficiency when there is no alternative. So, uh, different uh, uh, literatures uh, review that uh, quinine cause hemolysis in G6PD deficiency. So, uh, we can uh, use it. Uh, there is no need to hesitate. So, you can use the quinine in the people with G6PD deficiency because there is no alternative. Quinine discontinue immediately when hemolysis occur. Let's suppose if hemolysis occur, rupturing of red blood cells occur, so then uh, you can discontinue the quinine and you can use the alternate. Okay, hypersensitivity reactions uh, also occurs with the use of uh, quinines. Okay, uh, thank you so much dear viewers for watching uh, my lecture inshallah and uh, my next lecture uh, we will discuss about another anti-malarial agent that is called chloroquine. So thank you so much for watching my lecture. So if you have any questions, so I am available for your services. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.